Like all the women who served in the Vietnam era, Diane Carlson volunteered. To tell her story from the grounds of Arlington National Cemetery at the Women in Military Service for America Memorial, please welcome award-winning actress, Kathy Baker. I didn't join the Army to be an Army nurse. I wanted to be an Army nurse in Vietnam. The day I left, my father, he wasn't exactly the most affectionate person. He gave me the biggest hug ever and said, I have four sons and now I send my daughter off to war. They flew us nurses to Vietnam in skirts and cute little shoes. Then the doors opened and you felt the oppressive heat and smelled the terrible stench. A soldier with a bandolier of bullets is shouting, get down, get your head down. You felt nothing but terror. I ended up in Pleiku, working the 71st evacuation hospital. It was pure chaos. We worked in helmets and flak jackets during incoming enemy fire. Patients on every table, blood everywhere you looked. The bodies came so fast, it was like they were on a conveyor belt. Then it was done and we'd hose down the floors. We worked on young men whose chests were split open or whose faces were scarred beyond recognition and they'd lost their will to live. My biggest fear was that one of my patients would die on my watch and it would be my fault. Everything is based on trust in a war zone and we nurses trusted each other. But we never talked about what we saw or did that day. We couldn't. For the troops, the sound of choppers meant salvation. For us, it meant only one thing, more death. A nurse would often be the last person a soldier saw or touched or talked to before he died. I remember a young soldier wrapped nearly head to toe in bandages. His wounds were too severe. I knew he wouldn't make it through the night. Ma'am, he said, please stay. I don't want to die. Don't leave me. I won't, I said. I'm here with you. I held his hand as it grew colder and colder. He died a little after midnight. I still couldn't let go of his hand. I, I couldn't. I remember pulling the sheet over his face and I knew that I would never forget that night at his side. In times like that, all you could do is pray for grace. I ran out of prayers in Pleiku. Every day in Vietnam, I'd felt part of something worthwhile, but things were different back home. I couldn't relate to my own generation. I couldn't relate to my own country. People treated me as if I'd done something shameful, but I was proud of what I'd done. I tried to get on with my life, but I was always on edge. I couldn't sleep. My dreams became a tangle of Vietnam casualties calling out for their mothers and my own kids crying out for me. Trying to get over Vietnam was like being operated on by a rusty knife. What made it worse was that there was nobody I could talk to. So finally, I joined a group at the local vet center, the one woman with nine men. They welcomed me into their circle. They made me feel as if I belonged. I realized I wasn't alone. A counselor told me, Diane, you're so angry. And anger turned inward is depression. I'd been denying the whole Vietnam experience. I didn't even consider myself a veteran. When I first saw the Vietnam Memorial Wall, it took my breath away. Who of you died on my watch? I'm sorry we couldn't save you. We tried, we all tried. I felt a hand tapping on my shoulder and I turned to see this man in a faded field jacket. Ma'am, were you a nurse in Vietnam? He asked. I nodded. I've waited a lifetime to say this. Thank you. Thank you for being there for us. You're all we had. I felt blessed. 
I'd never shed a tear over my time in Vietnam, but that day I cried. That day I cried. Until I heard those simple words, thank you. I never realized how much I needed to hear them. Women have always stepped up to serve and always proven themselves. I wanted women who served in Vietnam to have a place that honored our sacrifice. In 1983, I made it my mission to create the first ever memorial on the National Mall dedicated to women who'd worn the military uniform. It took 10 years to break ground, but we prevailed. The Vietnam Women's Memorial is a place for healing. Together, families and veterans find a sense of purpose and belonging there. All sorrows can be born if we share our stories. It's hard, but once we share them, it softens the pain. I think about my service in Vietnam every day. I was a Vietnam nurse. We saved the lives of hundreds of thousands of wounded and touched many of the 58,000 others whose names are etched in black granite. It's part of my life. It's who I am. It's who we all are. We remember.